Welcome to Comfort Habit number two. This is part three of I am part of this problem. And everybody else should also recognize that we are all part of this problem. We are all living in this state, this country together. And we are all part of this problem. So let me start off with what I was going to pick off with on the tokens. All right. So you token black cats that are following Mr. Trump. Now, you have your reasons. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to ask you a question. I'm also here to question your moral compass. No, because for y'all who haven't been alive back during the Central Park attack, let me Google that real quick. What would they call? What was the name of the Central Park kids that raped the white lady? Yeah, it's not giving me that, but it is giving me their name. So, Central Park Jargon Case, Wikipedia. The Central Park Five, so I was off by two. It was five of them and not seven. So, here we go. Um, criminal, rapist, um, female jogger, uh, letter publicly identified as Tamisha Melly during the series of reported Manhattan Central Parks, 1989. <coughs> so, she was raped by five teenagers. Five youth. Convicted of rape, assault, robbery, convictions. But we later find out that these young men weren't the ones that did it. False confessions is a thing, people, especially amongst colored people. Now, for those who don't know, our illustrious president was one of the first people who said that. Um, they need to be hung. I'm sure you guys don't realize that and you don't want to watch that and you don't want to believe that shit and that's fine. That's your entitled. But I'm pretty sure that if you search the internet and you search news clippings, you will find pictures of non-President Trump talking really bad about these young black people, which you young black people are following this dick. It's fine by me. That's your choice. You have that choice. I'm not going to go against your choice. I don't have the right to go against your choice. I don't have the right to sway you making me part of the problem by trying to sway you. So I'm not going to try to sway you, but I am trying to open up the fracking eyes. Now, for whatever BS you're talking about, he's done more for the black community. Which one? Which black community? Where? Look, okay, let's see. Kim Kardashian convinced him to get a lady who um, went to jail for selling weed out. And a few other people. You know, oh, 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 my bad. Did I mention it? He went to China to rescue some black cats who come from old money who did something exceptionally stupid who could have just bought the fucking sunshades but decided, no, we're just going to steal these motherfuckers because we're rich and we're entitled and we're black. So we're going to just steal this shit. Not realizing that we're going to fuck it up for the next black guy that comes to China. So no. What has he done? Oh, he flew over there and got that to Kira. Yeah, I believe he also flew over there to handle um, Korea with um, the little white kid with the strange name who died over there and well he didn't die over there he had a coma and they brought him home and he died at home who was a university student at this college that's in my state in my city and um yeah okay he did that you know well hell um bill clinton went over there and did some shit muhammad ali went over there and did some shit everybody's gone over to korea or some country to do some shit for an american but nine times out of ten, it takes a famous person to go over and talk to somebody for the benefit of an American citizen that fucked up. Alright? I said it, that fucked up. Alright? Um, first and foremost, if you go to any country, I'm going to give you a piece of advice. Now, with the exception of Canada, because damn near anything goes in Canada. I love Canada. But, here's the thing. When you go to a country, and you are an American, honestly remember that not everybody in that country likes America. For Americans. And you have to be on your P's and Q's. Don't go over there breaking laws. Don't touch, take, or smack anyone. No. Without probable cause. Without witnesses. No. If an altercation ensues, try to find a police officer that actually speaks English. Because you can go somewhere and get fucked up. Now, a lot of the reasons why people don't like Americans is the simple fact that we're rowdy, rowdy, bowdy, bowdy. And sometimes we think it's okay to break laws in foreign countries, which is never okay. So when you go to a foreign country, you respect that country the way you would want them to respect us when they come here. You know? 
And also, diplomatic immunity only works for diplomats. It does not work for everyone else. So if you are not a diplomat, and if you are the child of a diplomat, that shit does not work for you. Okay? It may get your parents out of trouble. It won't help you. There was a kid that got caned. Be sure to Google that shit. He was an American citizen. He got caned for, like, smashing up the shit. I made a video about it. Go find it. Now, for you tokens. The Central Park Five. The five black kids who are illustrious president, who you're following, by the way. That's right. And tokens. You're following him. You know who you are. I'm not going to name you. You know, I just showed you on two videos back. You're a freaking token. You're in his pocket, and you feel like, um, you owe him something. Because he helped, um, some white people. Alright? That's cool. I respect that. But, do you believe the cause you're fighting for? Or are you just a token that has to be there because there has to be at least one political black token on the side of this man who has all out been racist towards Asians, towards immigrants, you know, towards blacks, but you're just too stupid to go back and look for it, you no. Know? Hey. I was a kid in 93. I was just getting out of high school. And when I read about this, this guy coming to be president, you know, I didn't watch The Apprentice. I, like, might have seen half an episode. That's how I know who Anna Rusa is. Because I think she, like, almost got fired, like, three times. I didn't watch that shit. I'm not into reality TV outside of wrestling. I love wrestling. But anything that's not wrestling or anime, I don't care two shits about. Politics. Politics ruins friendships. I have friends on my Facebook page that are Trump followers. I still respect them. I may question their moral compass. But at the same time, I have nothing against them. They have that right to choose who the fuck they want to vote for. My uncle served. I served. So that you can have that right. But at that same time, you have to ask yourself morally, not here, but here, or both, but mostly morally. Am I following this guy because I believe in the shit that he's fighting for? Am I following this guy because everybody's following him? You have to ask yourself that. But then you have to ask, okay, let me weigh the pros and cons on this shit. Has he said what everybody else is saying? Is he saying it or is it people just making that shit the fuck up? So I ask you, if you didn't see the CBS report or the NBC report or the other report which showed the same damn video on three different occasions, which was the same video, mind you, same video, when the Asian reporter asked him what he was going to do, and he blatantly, blatantly told her to go ask China. That wasn't racist to y'all? I mean, literally, that wasn't racist? Hold on. Hold on. I'm about to be racist, so if you're Asian, I'm sorry. Let, 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 let me offend you really quickly. I'm going to offend you. I'm sorry. These don't go no further. Okay? Here's a smile. Okay. So with this mask on, post video, you can see our eyes only slant a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. But that's because I'm multicultural. But she was full on Asian. And she had her mask on. And he looked her dead in the face and said, why don't you ask China? And she's also Chinese. But y'all don't see that as racist. So let's, let's flip the script. What if she would have been black from Nigeria? Would that have been as good as calling her the N-word? Why don't you go ask Nigeria? You know, what if, the, what if the, the thing came from Nigeria? No. And he came out the box real quick. Oh, why don't you go ask Nigeria? Or why don't you go ask Africa? Or why don't you go ask Egypt? I guess y'all would probably see it racist then because the color affects you. All right? What if he goes like this? I think I could probably pass for a Samoan. Why don't you go ask Samoa? You don't think I would be a little bit pissed off? Or my favorite, because people used to think I was Hawaiian all the time. Why don't you go ask Micronesia or Polynesia? Why don't you go ask them? It'd be like me asking, did Jimmy Superfly Snooker actually kill that lady or not? And now that he's dead, it doesn't even matter. But, you know, we're not going to go there. It's, it's not relevant. But the relevancy for you tokens is, have you done enough research on the guy you're following? And there's a few token females who are all against Black Lives Matter and all this. And now I'm going to play devil's advocate. Because these people who are against Black Lives Matter, they're 
touching on some really poignant shit. Black Lives Matter hasn't been to Chicago. They have been to Jacob Blake's. They have been to wherever the hell um, George Floyd is from. You know, they've been there. They've been to where Breonna Taylor's from. They haven't been to Chicago. So those guys in that video might be a touching on some shit that's right. Because people are still dying in Chicago. Like right now as we speak, people are probably still getting shot up in Chicago. And this is the part where I piss off more black people. Black on black crime has always been a thing. But it's always been recorded. As they said, the clan killings have not all been recorded. Of course not. Because half the motherfuckers in the clan have gotten away with murder because of their political status. And simple fact is, oh, hold on. No, I'm not Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe. But if you can't identify me by anything but my eyes, and the fact that I'm exceptionally light-skinned. Let's see if we can make this smaller. Okay, so if I'm in a hood and all you can see is my eyes, do you know if I'm white or black? Yet I'm killing black people? But, None of the clan killings have been recorded, like talking about it, versus the black on black crime that the tokens did mention. But here's the thing look at how they respond. If you're not raising your kids to not be rude and actually let someone get a word in, how do you expect people to react when you're talking, 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 talking? You're not listening, but you're talking, 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 talking. You're not listening, you're not hearing what they're saying, but you're talking, 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 talking. You're trying to get your point across, but how can you get a point across? if you can't receive it back. See, the thing about Discord is that everybody's entitled to how they feel. And you're going to live your truth come hell or high water. Nothing I say can positively or negatively influence your life because I am not that powerful. You know, you're not sleeping with me, so whether you have an orgasm tonight or not due to my tongue game or my penile implant is kind of be um, really on you. Because if you don't consent to sex, then I can't give it to you. But no one consents to murder, regardless of their race. No one consents to racism. No one wants to be called the N-word or the H-word or the C-word or the other C-words or the K-words or the wet back words or anything racially motivated. No one wants to be called that shit. You don't want to get up every day and go to a work with someone who's going to call you a, um, an Asian racist statement or a black racist statement, or a white racist statement. No one's going to work with somebody like that. Eventually, somebody's going to get hurt, rather than be on a job or be in real life or whatever. You know, like I said, when I was 16 until I was 19, this guy, Kegler's, wouldn't stop calling me chief. And hell yeah, I wanted to go on a warpath just to shut him up. Because the more I asked him to not call me that, the more he took it amongst himself to call me that. And I ask you, does that make him racist or was he just making racist statements? Or did he just do this shit to get on my nerve? I wouldn't say he was racist. I would say he would make a fuck ton of racist statements to get on my nerve. Because he knew that it had me. And that's why we are all part of this problem. You didn't think I was going to go back to that, right? But we are part of this problem. One, I acknowledged it the first time that I asked him to please call me by my name. I even used manners when I said please. The next time, I said please. The time after that, how many times in three years do you think I said please? After the first year, I figured I didn't have to say please. I would say, hey man, that's not my name. Then I went back to saying please. Please don't call me chief. My name is James. J-A-M-E-S is written right here on my chest. Do not call me chief. Every week. Hey, Chief. How's it going, Chief? What's up, Chief? So again, does that make this guy racist? Or does it just make this guy dick? Maybe a both. I've never seen the guy after I put work in there. I didn't go looking for him. But if you're out there, I don't hold any rule against you. But when someone requests you nicely to stop calling them 
by insulting derivatives, then you probably should. If I met every Chinese person, I'm sorry, I'm about to offend you if you are Asian, so please forgive me now. But I'm going to extend this video before I go to four and five. If I went to every Asian person, and the first people I went to were Chinese, and I started going, what's up, the, what the hell is the guy name? Fu Manchu. Or what if I said, um, what's up, um, what the hell is his name? The, Mickey Rooney played him. Damn it. Charlie Chan. But what if I went to every Chinese person and jokefully said, What's up, Charlie Chan? And it's a hot chick. And she hauls off and slaps the shit on Charlie Chan can be considered an insult. Oh, I wouldn't blame her. What if I walked up to him and said, Yo, Wen Chong. And oh, I'm a martial artist. How do I know I didn't just offend this chick because she might not have any clue of who the fuck Wen Chong is? Or what if I walked up to her and I didn't know her name, so I just started calling her Mula. You know, would she take that right? Would she take that wrong? Uh, what, what would I do? Uh, what would she do? What if I walked up to the first Native American I saw and started calling her Squaw? That's an insult, by the way. What if I did that? I don't think I'll be dating her. No, if anything, I might be running from her when she tries to put an arrow through my throat. Or a knife. Or maybe... She may know the deal woman, and they summon that bitch to come and stomp my fucking ass to death. It's a mythical creature, for those who are aware. What if I went up to any woman and called her B-I-T-C-H, C-U-N-T, I don't want to say them, so I'll just spell them out, or W-H-O-R-E, or S-L-U-T. You think these women would prefer me to call them that versus calling them by their name? So I'm asking you tokens. If someone says somebody says something, don't you think you ought to at least look into it? Before you start saying, well, I follow this guy because this is what everybody's doing. I'm a token, so I'm going to follow this guy because three other black guys are doing it. Yeah, well, if three other black guys jumped off a bridge and there was rocks down there, would you jump to? I mean, there's no water, there's just rocks. Oh, they have bungee cords, but those things are not a thousand percent effective. Don't you see the pump commercials with the Reebok pumps? Yeah, you should probably think that about What about this? You can't swim. But three black guys jump off a bridge who can swim. It's the thing that everybody's doing. Are you going to jump? And you can't swim. The water's perfectly deep. There's no rocks. There's no chance of you getting hurt. You meant to how to land. There's dead scared on my lip, which I'm trying to peel off without touching because of cancer source. So, you can't swim. You've been trained how to jump. You've been trained how to fall in the water. But all the other guys are doing it. The catch is that they all know how to swim. And you're too scared to tell everybody that you don't know how to swim. Do you jump if you can't swim? Even though there's a 99.9% .9 possibility that you will not be hurt at all. You will land safely in that water. There's no rocks. There's no sharks. There's nothing in that water that can hurt you but the water because you can't swim. Do you jump? I sure as hell hope you don't. But if you're dumb enough to jump and you can't swim, you kind of deserve to drown. Because common sense would tell you that if you can't swim, you stay the fuck out of water unless you're taking a shower or drinking water because water brings life. But if your dumb ass can't swim, what the fuck did you jump in the water for? Why are you even near water that isn't bath water? And yes, people have drowned in bathtubs, by the way, factually speaking. So, to you tokens, have you actually really been aware of the stuff? Now, let me, let me break it down. I watched something on Instagram yesterday. Young lady from the Philippines. I'm not mad at her. I'm furious at her. All right? And I'm going to tell you why. And then I'll get back on the tokens real quick. So she's talking about all the freedom she has when she's come to America. All the freedoms this, all the freedoms that. And then, I mean, she was making very good points. And she was correcting everything she said. And then she bust out Trump 2020. I immediately unfollowed her, by the way. Probably a mistake on my half. But... 
here's the thing. You know, you're from the Philippines. Guess what? Your ass is still Asian. So somebody who doesn't know that you're from the Philippines will see you as an Asian. And someone who may have an issue with Asians, specifically Chinese, may think that you may have the Kung Flu, as he called it, and then assault you because you are Asian. And they don't know the difference between a Filipino, a Native American, or a straight Chinese person because all Asians look the same. So they decide, hey, even though you're a Trump supporter, we're going to whoop your ass because you have the Kung Flu. This has happened to people. Period. But y'all are following this guy. You know. And, and he doesn't, like, get on. He doesn't break into the news and apologize. You know, I'm sorry for putting all the Asian Americans in danger by calling this thing the Chinese virus. I'm sorry for putting all Asians in America in danger for calling it Kung Flu. Well, not all Asians know Kung Flu. But they all know that you have been one racist son of a bitch to call this disease the China virus. Granted, yes, it came from Wuhan, China. But you have a lot of Chinese American citizens. Hell, you have a lot of Asian American citizens. Of all Asian ethnicities, including Native Americans. How much danger did you just put everybody in by calling it that? Because there's a lot of racist of fucking Americans as well. Who do not like Chinese. Who do not like Native Americans. Who do not like Vietnamese because of the Vietnam War. Who do not like Koreans because of the Korean War. Who do not like Laos. And we ain't even been to war with Laos. But they don't know that. They don't care. They just see an Asian. Let's fuck them up. That's what racist people do. But you know what tokens do? Tokens don't formulate their own opinion. They just go with the crowd because I want to be somebody. Well, guess what, goddammit? I want to be somebody, too. See the Scarlet Spider suit there? I want to be that. But sadly, I don't have the ability to clean the walls. I can't design web shooters. And if I could, I wouldn't be making this damn video because I'd be out somewhere where I'd actually be doing a good service to people. I also want to be a G.I. Joe. That shit's not going to happen. My military career was over before it began because I fell in a fucking hole and got hurt really fucking badly, which affected my ability to shoot, which gave me an honorable discharge. But had they let me stay and let me use a bow and arrow, I'm pretty sure I could do a fuck ton better because I'm pretty good with my bow and arrow. I'm not perfect, but I'm pretty damn good. But here's the thing on that. That was totally irrelevant. But the people did you follow? Because, you know, there's a thing called being in the in crowd, something I've never been. I've never been popular, I've never been cool, but I've always been honest. And I'm going to be honest right now. When you see these people, especially black people, you have to ask yourself, where have you been? What rock did you crawl from under to support a guy who has been racist to people before he was the president? And now he's mostly picking on Asians, but it's still being racist. And how do you know before it's your turn at that. What happens when one of your people of color bumps into his son and decides I'm going to throw a punch? And now he has something to say about people of color. Are you still going to be so gung-ho about following him then? And I'm not talking about his oldest son. I'm talking about his younger son. The one in the school age where kids are cruel and kids do fight. I can explain that from experience. When I was younger, at my school, we had a race war in grade school. A fucking race war in grade school. So I'm going to um, save that for the next video. But I, I will open up with that in the next video about the race war in grade school. Because it, it, it leads to something that you tokens need to understand. Sometimes we do be the blind following the blind. So be ready for part four.